There is a hermit in the mountains of Wu Long. His reputation as a capable scholar is strong. He spends his days reading scrolls of history. He is an enigma concealed with total mystery. Living in a humble cottage with a thatched roof, he cultivates his mind while still in his youth. Then one day, a fateful knock came at his door. Standing there were three mighty heroes of war. A distant relative of the Han Empire named Lu Bei. He wanted to talk about the current affairs of the day. The great Kong Ming was very gracious and nice. Lu Bei had visited his thatched cottage thrice. The two men discussed the warlords of the age. Lu Bei was impressed with the secluded sage. Kong Ming showed him the famous Long Zhong plan. Whilst he sat there waving his feathered crane fan, Lu Bei found his advice to be sincere and true. Zhuge Liang finally left his mountain to join Shu. A long and dangerous journey awaited the men. Kong Ming knew the sword couldn't match the pen. Many schemes needed to be thought through, such as waiting to attack Wei whilst allying with Wu. But destiny decided against restoring the Han. Zhuge Liang tearfully died of illness in the Wu Zhang. His memory continues to live during this modern time. His contributions to his master were simply sublime. Zhuge Liang, otherwise known as Kong Ming, was born in 181 AD in the later Han Dynasty era of ancient China. He was a high-ranking military strategist and advisor, a respected statesman, a cultist practitioner, accomplished writer and inventor. The scholar Pang Di Gong gave Kong Ming his famous nickname Wu Long, the Crouching Dragon. It was given to him whilst he lived as a hermit in the countryside of Wolonggan. Zhuge Liang was orphaned early in his life. The second of three brothers, both Kong Ming and his brother Zhuge Xin were raised by their uncle Zhuge Shen. They followed their uncle to live in Jing Province, which was governed by Zhuge Shen's old friend Liu Biao. After his uncle's death, Zhuge Liang tilled the fields, studied, and enjoyed reciting poetry and folk songs. Kong Ming developed close friendships with various local intellectuals, such as Xu Chu and Shi Tao. As a legalist, he often compared himself to the likes of Guan Zong and Yu Yi, two prominent historical figures. <laughs> Known for his feathered fan, dignified presence, intellect, resourcefulness, and loyalty, he quietly maintained his humble lifestyle, educating himself on current affairs and farming the land, whilst waiting for a worthy master. His reputation as a reclusive genius soon spread throughout the land, reaching the ears of the warlord Lu Bei, a distant relative of the Han bloodline. Lu Bei was struggling to realize his dream of restoring the Han back to its former glory. Despite having his mighty brothers Guan Yu and Zhang Fei, Lu Bei lacked capable strategists. Xu Chu, another brilliant mind of the time, recommended Zhuge Liang to Lu Bei. 
But in order to win over his heart, Liu Bei had to travel there and recruit him in person. Liu Bei paid three visits to his rural thatched cottage. The first visit was in vain, as Xu Geleon wasn't home. The second visit was also unsuccessful, but Liu Bei was not about to quit. At last, on the third visit, Liu Bei finally got a chance to meet the legendary Kong Ming. Kong Ming, sir. Liu Bei, dou dan qing ni chu shan xiang zhu. 我必终生奉你为师，先生啊！先生不出，苍生无救。刘备，恳请先生。先生，刘备，叩求先生。诸葛亮，愿效犬马之劳。The two men had a long conversation about current affairs. It was during this fateful discussion that Zhuge Liang presented Liu Bei with the famous Long Zhong Plan. Zhuge essentially predicted the Three Kingdoms era. Some believe that he was solely responsible for it. After witnessing Liu Bei's sincerity and morality, Zhuge agreed to join him. And he finally left his thatched cottage in 207 in hopes of restoring the Han Empire. Zhuge Liang was 27 years old at the time of the recruitment. From this moment on, history has changed dramatically. The Long Zhong Plan became a thousand myths. Kong Ming was born with a smile, and he will be the king of the three kingdoms. Kong Ming, the king of the three kingdoms, has been crowned king of the three kingdoms. 今日终于得其主，出深山了。孔明虽得其主，不得其实啊！戏哉，戏哉 ！As a politician, Zhuge Liang made firm but fair laws. He refused to indulge the local elites and established an agricultural system that turned the kingdom of Shu into a regional power. As an administrator, he was exceptionally talented. A workaholic by nature, he would enforce punishment and reward fairly, which caused the officials of Shu to respect him greatly. He never shied away from his duties, and he always maintained strict governance. He turned a once poor, struggling kingdom into a rich empire, focusing on developing Shu's economy by creating farms. As an advisor and strategist, he worked tirelessly to assist his lord Liu Bei in an effort to create his vision. He planned a successful alliance between the kingdoms of Shu and Wu, and would regularly use diplomacy to solve situations. As an occultist, Zhuge was said to be a follower of Taoism. He would regularly take advantage of divination rituals and astrology. He studied the Bagua and Yin Yang principles, modifying them into practical battle formations. As a general, it was said that Zhuge Liang always took to the battlefield in a four-wheeled chariot. He was known for his clever use of ambushes, and he was mostly responsible for recruiting several prominent figures such as Zhang Wei, Pang Tong, and Ma Su. Throughout the chaotic Three Kingdoms period, Kong Ming did an excellent job in maintaining Shu's financial power. Wei, the far larger kingdom, was put on the defensive by the underdog Shu, thanks to Liang's persistent attacks. Liu Bei and Kong Ming became close friends. They were known to be inseparable. Liu Bei once made the famous remark, "Now that I have Kong Ming, I am like a fish that has finally found water." 
After Liu Bei's untimely death in 223, at the age of 63, Zhuge Liang maintained his loyalty to the kingdom. He did not take the throne. Instead, he assisted the son of Liu Bei, Liu Shan. His reign of 40 years was the longest of all in the Three Kingdoms era. Liu Shan granted Kong Ming the title Marquis of Wu District and created an official office for him. Soon after, Prime Minister Zhuge Liang was appointed governor of Yi Province and put in charge of all state affairs. Not a bad position for a farmer from Shandong. Liu Bei's son Liu Shan viewed Zhuge Liang as his father, and the two worked together to manage the kingdom. During his reign as regent of Shu, Zhuge Liang set his sights on subjugating the southern barbarians. Kong Ming was concerned that the local tribes known as Nanmon would stage a revolt, so he set off on the famous Southern Campaign. In the spring of 225, after successfully allying with Eastern Wu, Kong Ming suppressed the rebellion, not through conventional means of warfare, but by using psychological warfare. He successfully defeated and captured a local aristocrat and rebel leader named Meng Huo seven times. Each time, he released him until he finally surrendered. Zhuge Liang had managed to quell the rebellion. The Kingdom of Shu enjoyed a decisive victory as the Nanmon gave Shu many tributes and gifts, consisting of silver, gold, oxen, and war horses. Zhuge allowed Meng Huo to remain as governor of Nanjiang. This ensured that no problems would occur in the future. The Nanjiang region enjoyed prosperity and stability under the reign of Shu. The rich and abundant resources helped the state of Shu to become more prosperous. Once the situation in the area had settled, Kong Ming returned north to focus on attacking the powerful kingdom of Wei. After pacifying the Nanmon tribes, Zhuge Liang made plans to launch a large-scale attack on Wei. From the years of 228 until his death in 234, Kong Ming made a total of five expeditions against Wei. Back and forth results ensued. Low food supplies, stalemates, and bad weather affected the battles. Zhuge did manage to recruit the young warrior Xiang Wei, but the great strategist finally met his match in 231. The talented Wei commander Sima Yi, otherwise known as Zhang Da. Zhuge Liang and Sima Yi reached a stalemate during the Battle of the Wuzhong Plains. During this most unfortunate time, Zhuge fell seriously ill. He began to sleep and eat less. He would strain his energy on matters both big and small, such as tending to the meals of the troops. Due to the exhaustion, he eventually died in his main camp at the age of 53 in the early autumn of 234. Zhuge Liang was also a talented inventor. He is credited as the original inventor of the Kong Ming Lantern, otherwise known as the Chinese Lantern. He also invented a strange esoteric device known as the Wooden Oxen. Some believe it was designed primarily to transport food supplies, like that of an early wheelbarrow. 
Others believe it was a magical cart that could move on its own. Kong Ming was said to be the inventor of the landmine, the mantal, a type of steam Chinese bun. He also modified the repeating crossbow and improved upon its original design so that it could shoot farther and faster. Using his occult knowledge, the legend says that he created a magical stone maze known as the Stone Sentinel Maze, an array of rocks and boulders based upon the concept of the Bagua. Kong Ming was also an avid writer and scholar. He enjoyed reading and writing. Popular books written by him today are The 36 Stratagems and Mastering the Art of War. Kong Ming wrote his famous memorial prior to his northern expeditions, the Chu Shi Biao, which provides an intimate look into his unquestionable loyalty to the state of Shu, a written work that has driven many readers to tears. Many famous stories surround Zhuge Liang, such as the Empty Ford strategy, where he used reverse psychology in order to avoid an attack. He sat atop the fort and played his zither, fooling Sima Yi into thinking that he had already made plans for an ambush. Sima Yi retreated, thinking it was another trap. In actuality, the city was almost entirely empty. Another popular story is known as Borrowing Arrows with Thatched Boats. This tale took place during the Battle of the Red Cliffs in the winter of 208. The Wu commander Zhou Yu is plotting to kill Zhuge Liang out of jealousy. He decides that the best way to destroy him will be through the military law. Zhou Yu gave Kong Ming an impossible task to create 100,000 arrows within just 10 days. If Kong Ming fails his task, he would be executed. Kong Ming laughed and told him that he only needed three days to collect the arrows. His strategy consisted of gathering 20 large boats, each man with a few soldiers and human-like figures made of straw. Zhuge Liang used the heavy fog as cover and beat several war drums loudly to simulate a much larger attack. Cao Cao, the enemy commander, chose not to pursue the attacking boats due to the thick fog, so he ordered his archers to shoot arrows from a distance. Kong Ming sat in the boat enjoying wine whilst the straw figures collected thousands of arrows. By the time the boats had returned to shore, they had collected more than 100,000 arrows, so Zhou Yu could not execute Kong Ming under the facade of military law. Perhaps the most fantastical story involving Zhuge Liang is the famous Borrowing the Eastern Wind story. The Wu commander Zhou Yu had prepared his naval fleet to face Cao Cao once again at Qi Bi. He devised a fire attack on Wei's fleet of ships, but despite his many preparations, he forgot to account for the direction of the wind. Upon hearing this, Kong Ming told Zhou Yu that he was a weather magician who was skilled in the magical arts and that he was capable of procuring a strong eastern wind in time for the battle by using Taoist sorcery. An elaborate altar was constructed on Nanping Hill. Zhuge Liang ascended the altar dressed in Taoist robes, his hair loosened with several men at his command. He performed the occult ritual continuously without rest. Zhuge Liang 
不许交头接耳，不许矢口乱言，不许大惊小怪，不许心生杂念。违令者，斩。After three days of prayer, the wind began to blow. Hearing the news, Zhou Yu feared that Kong Ming would one day become a threat to Wu, so he sent several armed guards to behead him without giving any reason. The guards arrived only to find Zhuge Liang had completely disappeared from the altar. Today, Zhuge Liang has been deified in China. Many temples, shrines, and statues have been made in his honor. He symbolizes cunning intelligence and wisdom. Even after almost 2,000 years, he is still fondly remembered and regarded as one of the most accomplished strategists of his era.